welcome to Local SEO Today. I'm Roger Murphy. And I'm John Vaughn. We want to welcome our listeners to our podcast at Local SEO. We, we have many different topics on a regular basis, so please check back all the time. And today, uh, John, we've got, and it's, it's all around uh, business for business entrepreneurs, and it, we're, we want to talk about trends that are happening during this pandemic that we've all been through and post-pandemic in terms of with trends that have come in that we see that aren't going to go anywhere. Yeah, it's, it's going to be, be a good topic, topic because uh, definitely these trends um, are going to be here to stay because yeah. now uh, customers, your users are now um, changing their behavior. It's they have adapted to this new norm. And now you, you as a business owner just need to pivot and adopt these changes so that the customers of yours will find it more easy for you to do business with you. And that's very fair. And, you know, some business owners and entrepreneurs listening today, we're going to touch on many, many of these trends that are happening. Some of them, John, may not have adopted them yet. And after today, they might rethink, maybe I should start focusing on uh, taking advantage or reacting and pivoting to these trends because it'll help your business long term. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, I, think I think the, the first, first thing we're going to talk about is um, cashless palm yeah. Yeah. Um, So. A lot of these businesses um, who don't have an e-commerce store or if it is a retail outlet, um, a POS machine, right? Collecting yeah. credit card, collecting Interact, collecting um, just different forms of payment as opposed to cash. Yeah. Because a lot of business, a lot of customers don't carry cash today mm -hmm. because of, you know, the tracing of and whatever viruses, bacteria that might be actually physically in a note. That's um, right. So you need to understand what what's transpired here. That's right. So you, and to your to that point, to that point, John, the trend was actually happening prior to the pandemic. It's just accelerated it where it's just and I, and we, we all had it where you know you go in for a to get a coffee or something, but they the the uh, they weren't in the early days of this pandemic. They weren't sure about surfaces so that's they they put signs up no cash please so that was they they basically asked for assistance from consumers from the, the customer to help them and 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 do as minimal interaction and and physically touching as as possible so exactly so imagine a lot of these businesses like a starbucks or tim hortons they already had loyalty cards that filled up a card and then you just tap um, and of, of course, if you have a phone, there's a lot of these payment systems, just like the PayPal's out there. Yep. Um, you know, all these ones where you fill up your your uh, smartphone with funds and you just tap. Yep. It becomes tapless, right? right. Uh, so it just sped up, like you mentioned, about the the whole world of how we interact, exchanging money, right, exactly. for good. Uh, and services. So if you haven't adopted that, make sure you do because now it's a norm. And if you don't adopt it, people are actually going to be not probably wanting to show up to your mm -hmm. storefront if it is cash only. So true. Another trend is delivery. And, you know, again, this trend was happening, but the, the Amazon effect of, you know, next day delivery, John, it, it, it's, a, it's every type of business and even whether it's food service or food delivery, delivery for everything has, you know, you can shop at a local retailer and they would send something locally to you. Um, so it, that trend is really accelerated as well. Yeah, there's all this, this entire industry of Uber, uh, everything, you know, just delivery, driving, ordering it online to get it delivered to you, FedExing it, Canada Post. Um, yeah. Because it's all about convenience, right? And people exactly. want things yesterday, like the Amazon effect. And you as a business owner, you need to adapt to it. You need to ensure that your customers are savvy today. Mm -hmm. They understand what's out there. And they're very smart in terms of technology as well. So you need to ensure that you're able to deliver quickly on time and efficiently, effectively. Exactly. So figure out how to... And it may, there may be, you know, it, it, everything is a, is, a, is a fashion and a trend. The idea of everything going online for shipping and delivery is 
really popular right now. But of course, we're social animals, John. And once this pandemic finally recedes, I think some people will be, I just want to get out. I just want to walk around. I want to go experience the mall again or whatever. So, so it's going to be a mixture of both. But right now, this trend, you know, boy, oh boy, you know, talk about efficiency. I mean, someone said to me recently, it was a part I needed for something. They said, you can come by and pick it up. And I said, well, do you have, can you deliver? And they said, yeah, we can perlator in two days. I'm like, that's better for me. So that's, I, I, I am where I would have at one point gone easily to go get it. Nah, send it in. I'll, 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 uh, I'll accept it by per later. So, so it all depends on like the urgency of it as yeah. well as, you know, right now we're still living in this pandemic. So there's still a lot of precautions that people have to go through. Right. Um, but when things open up again, for sure, there is going to be people out there that are now used to just delivering, buying everything online and having it delivered. Exactly. Um, but like me and you, we are social creatures and we want to go out to the mall again, go have some dining experience. Exactly. You know. just, just a change of scenery. Uh, the next trend is this e-commerce. It ties in very much with delivery, John, but e-commerce boom. Uh, and again, ordering or going online to a website, filling up your cart, uh, uh, it has really accelerated in this, during this pandemic. Yeah, just having the ability to sell a product service online um, allows you to hit a different segment of the market that mm -hmm. you've never done before and allows you to generate additional revenue, right? Uh, because there are shoppers online that are just so comfortable with just buying things online. Let it be food now, uh, let it be buying books and any widget out there. But if you haven't really ventured into this e-commerce boom where Maybe you are a hair salon and you have supply that you can sell. Create a Shopify site. Allow your existing customers to buy shampoo and conditioner or any of those fall products online at your <laughs> e-store, right? Because they are already loyal customers of yours. They can't come to the physical store. So may, might as well offer them something that still allows you to generate some revenue. That's right. It, it helps you, helps them become sticky and if they can reorder not have to drive down to get to you to to get the product um but uh, you know again it depends on the type of service and product you're offering but just to make it uh that relationship uh more connecting uh it makes perfect sense and this e-commerce thing is is uh is i mean everyone should have that available now on their depending on their business but have it on their website yeah it's it's, it's brand, brand loyalty ultimately and it's um, now, you know, people tend to drip with an email list and other forms of e-commerce, e but mm -hmm. it allows you another avenue to market your services online as well, right? Like not just restrict yourself in that local landscape in your client base, but it could be now global. You can hit more people out there. Mm -hmm. so it's a great opportunity if you haven't ventured into it. Yeah. Um, the fourth thing we're going to talk about is sanitization. Uh, because now it's, if you don't have, you know, this liquid bottle at the store, right? um, you're going to probably lose a lot of people that are now comfortable about coming to your store again. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and certainly the grocery stores, uh, self-checkout, the, the carts you use, uh, if you go to Costco, everything is, is sanitized or sprayed down in between customers. And that's just something you never saw before, but we are a, a, we are a society now of sanitation and sanitization. Exactly. And yeah. not just, you know, washing your hands, but now they sometimes give you gloves, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone has to wear a mask. Uh, but the whole purpose is we don't know the spread, right? how it's spread and mm -hmm. who has it, who doesn't. So that's take right. that extra precaution, right? Make sure you clean your hands still. Make sure you still, yeah, as a business owner, you equip your business with what your customers expect. That's and it. You do that, they will be feeling more comfortable coming back to your store. Um, and I have heard, I've seen, of course, on websites, John, uh, on the on the like a banner in the very first message saying, "We are sanitizing for your safety." So safety and sanitization is so important with consumers that you as a business owner, that's something, a trend that you've just got to stay on top of. Um, and I've heard radio commercials of uh, 
of um, you know, uh, it's actually a, a LASIK eye you know service. They talk about we are completely sanitized and safe uh, and secure for your safety. So that messaging is very important, and um, it's a trend that's not going to go away. Yeah, it's all about the users, your customers, right? Yeah. Like their expectations are so vital for your survival of the business. So you need to listen, understand what goes on in terms of their um, behaviors. Yeah. Uh, point, number, point number five, John, I, is I think near and dear to your heart and my heart because we, we work, with sm small businesses who we are. That's who we help every day. Uh, my family, of course, was a small business as well when I was growing up. So I understand it. But this prioritization of, of, of consumers wanting to shop small shop local support their neighbors in their community it's so vital because as you know you probably have friends and family or neighbors that um, you, you connect with on a regular basis and maybe with this pandemic you've gotten closer to them because you see them more frequently in walks and at the park or whatever it may be at the school um, so you understand how important local community building is and for you to now, when things open up, shop and support one another to really build that community feel again, it, it means a lot to not just the business owner, but for you to have, have a say in it all, right? To exactly. Start. And small business as a percentage of total businesses in the country, it's the vast majority of, of, of that's what people are. They are small business entrepreneurs. Uh, and I forget the number, but John, it could be under 20 people or under 50 people. Uh, small business is the majority. And so, it, of course, it helps us. It helps our communities to support each other that way. Exactly. If you think about not just businesses, but all the employees that support the small business. And, you know, it takes a village to support a family, right? Like, it takes a lot of people to support one another. So we need to ensure that they are around when things uh, open up again. So continue supporting local uh, because they are the lifeline of every single city, community and neighborhood in the world. Exactly. And I do, you know, as business owners listening to this today, and of course they, they're all over it, I would also add the advice to them that their unique selling proposition, whatever their product or service is, they need to, to get that message out so that it's not, don't do business with me just because I'm small. Do business with me because I provide something more, uh, uh, you know, a better experience, more expertise, more personalized care, whatever those are. So I always say, you know, don't, uh, don't just, um, you can't expect people to come through your door uh, just because you're a small business owner in a community. Provide, you have to go that extra step. Get to know them, right? Get to know people by their first name. Personalization is huge, right? Storytelling is huge. Let yeah. people in on your life. Be yourself. Yeah. And of course, then that's how you build your business. Uh, number six in terms of trends, John, is technology, which I think we can all relate to. Oh, yes. Uh, definitely it has uh, advanced, uh, allowed your business to hopefully um, pivot um, to become more predominantly. People are seeking information before they make a decision. And if you were not strong digitally before, let it be building your own website, having social media asset pieces, creating good compelling content. It's more important than ever to ensure that you have a digital footprint, some more visibility, some content out there to allow people to absorb and make up their mind on who they want to seek out as their product and service offering. And then from a business owner standpoint, in terms of depending if, you, if you're an insurance brokerage, and you've got staff, are they working virtually now? Are they working from home? Are they working remote? Uh, are they doing some sort of, uh, you know, a, a skeleton staff in the office? Everything's changed. And technology, as a business owner, you've got to look at all the different technologies that will uh, assist your team, give them, uh, you know, team building uh, get that interaction, whether it's Zoom. And I think we talked with John before a year ago at this time, did many people even know what Zoom was, uh, except for maybe some, some real, you know, business to business or, uh, you know, multi location uh, businesses across the country, but everybody knows Zoom. It's personally used now for, for family 
search uh, for communication. So it's crazy how much technology is out there. Oh yeah, I've gone through dozens of Zoom birthday meetings. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's technology. So understanding when you build a website, you need security, you need software, you need um, collaboration, um, messaging if you have multiple staff. You need, um, you know, passwords, you need logins, you need to ensure that you have everything available for your team, your business to run smoothly, optimally, um, so that there is no um, asset that is, you know, hackable. Um, now we're, people are very prone to leaving gaps out there if they're not educated and informed. So make sure you set things up properly um, and use proper security and vendors out there that are redundant and global, right? People that you trust that aren't going to be fly by night companies. So make sure just be prepared because there's always good and bad in every business. Make sure you're connecting with the good. Yeah. And uh, item number seven in terms of trends we're going to talk about today is virtual events. And it sort of slides direct, you know, from what we just spoke of in terms of technology, technology is allowing now, John, virtual events. Why travel? Like you and I, when we did that speaking conference in Vancouver um, a year ago, just before the pandemic, really a lot of uh, events could rethink why fly if you can do this and attend it virtually. Yeah, things, things have, have definitely, definitely changed, right? right? Trade shows, conferences, speaking, mm -hmm. um, but people still want to get out. And I think yes. that's the one thing that is lacking, that social interaction, mm -hmm. the brainstorming collaboration. Um, people have to peak, like you mentioned, uh, in terms of you know technology, video conferencing. They so but as a business, like virtual events is here to stay. Mm -hmm. Like there's industries that have developed and built along this. Let it be for business purposes, social purposes. It could be for any networking purpose. It could be even for internal business uh, functions, right? Um, making sure that you have events that allow for people that are all over globally to connect in. Exactly. Um, yeah. So it allows for more opportunity as well as, um, you know, yes, you're going to miss that social aspect, but try to intertwine it, make it a hybrid approach. Mm -hmm. And it's not, it's not that it's all or nothing because it, there are many, many it, like car shows or consumer shows. You want to touch and feel and see and that can't be done virtually. But the pandemic, out of pandemic, rose this idea of, of the ability of keeping things going virtually in the meantime. So, And, and I, I believe a couple of years ago, there were virtual reality um, goggles, right? Where you can experience oh, yes. travel through virtual reality. However, if I were wanting to travel to a different country, I want to personally experience it. So yeah. maybe that whole business has expedited because of what just uh, transpired exactly. this past year. But, um, you know, think about different opportunities that this world uh, throws at us. Mm -hmm. So that's that trend. And of course, the, and then the last one today we'll talk about is working from home. Again, it was many, many businesses. And, and of course, when I was corporate uh, a decade ago, they moved many of the employees home even then. But it accelerated even further and more with this uh, pandemic last year. Yeah, I, I believe we already did a podcast about working from home, but it's so important to understand that um, people are are either going to enjoy working from home or not. Um, it's something that's now out there because people were forced to yeah. work from home. So now it's now they had a taste of it. They now either like it or not when things open up. But mm -hmm. a lot of people may really love working from home and they save a lot of time from commute, stress, um, you know, changing and all this other stuff, right? Uh, because you can sleep in now. You can do things a little bit later and enjoy different things, right? right. You need to set yourself up properly if you're home-based. Yeah. Um, and that is, again, that trend isn't going to go away. And at the end of the day, Will it be a hybrid, as you mentioned, John, that you'll be going to the office sometimes and then working from home sometimes or whatever? It really will. It'll come down to it. But yes, we're human beings and there's a social aspect 
and, uh, and, and in, a, in a major survey, and I remember seeing this very and, and reading, and it made perfect sense. The number one reason many, many employees stay at a company is because of the social interaction and their friends. So, you know, working from home, yes, is very convenient, but the idea of having friends and interacting and, and you know, doing that, uh, you know, just being human beings and social is incredibly important to people. So and it all depends on your life stage, right? So if you're yep. younger, you need that social interaction to mm -hmm. um, get through the day. But as you, you know, mature, maybe you have a family, you want to spend more time with your family and you don't want to commute. So yep. it, it all depends on the person individualized and just enjoy the process. Have fun, right? Um, but working from home is not for everyone. I get it, but it is here to stay for a lot of industries and businesses. Exactly. Well, John, I thought that was terrific today. I really appreciate your time and some of your thoughts on this. And it's, it's great to get perspective. And I think our listeners today are, will, will be able to take some things away from this as well and maybe just get them to think a little bit more about all these trends. Amazing. Well, thanks a lot, Roger. For the John, thank you. And thanks to our listeners. And we'll, we'll uh, see you again at Local SEO today.